Hi everybody, welcome back to the channel. I'm Dan Murphy and today on Talk Tech to Me, it's time to stop wasting time copying and pasting into the chat GPT. Perplexity has just launched a new browser that doesn't just show you the internet, it does the internet for you. It's called Comet and it's the first true agentic browser. In this video, I'm going to show you the five key features and how it's a genuine Chrome killer, how it works and why you should be using it. So let's get into it. For decades, our browsers have been passive windows. Yeah, we type in a query and we get 10 blue links. We click around till we find the answer. Perplexity, perplexity was the pioneer of AI first search and it said no more. Comet is built on the familiar Chromium framework. So it's fast, it's UI is clean and it supports all your favorite Chrome extensions and bookmarks that you have for. You can import them straight in in one click. This main switching is painless. But the magic is where it replaces the traditional search engine with Perplexity AI and integrates a powerful Comet Assistant into every single tab. The goal isn't to browse, but to delegate. Comet turns web browsing into your personal digital assistant. So let's get into some of the key features. And so here we are. I have the dark theme enabled, enabled but you can see very clearly it has that real Chrome kind of feel about it. Uh, but one thing you will notice is in the center where you would have had your Google tab, it essentially has your search tab down it as well. The first feature I want to bring you to is context aware AI. So let's go to a news website. So let's go to BBC News. And I want to find a good long article. Politics, of course. Uh, let me see this one. Yes, that's a long article. Too long for me to read. So I want to get Chrome, I want to get this to summarize it then as well. Up in the top corner, you have the assistant and I'm going to open it up. And this is your window to everything that perplexity can do. Um, it's essentially, it's context aware. So any website you have, it will open up and it can interact directly with it. This is a long article, so I want to summarize this. Summarize this article. And I spelled that terribly, but you can actually see it's starting to actually already predict what I wanted to say, what I'm, what I'm thinking. And yeah, what was that? Three, four seconds. It has taken this long winded, quite dense article and summarized it in sort of 10 key points then as well. And yeah, from that, yes or no, you can copy and paste it out. And so yeah, it can t instead of having to sort of copy link or copy the entire context into a chat GPT or Gemini, it's there, it's, it's built in for you. Next thing I'm going to do is, let's go to Amazon. And I want to look up office chairs. Office chairs, excellent. Okay, cool. Hundreds, if not thousands of office chairs available on Amazon. Let's want the assistant and let me see if I can get compare prices. Compare prices with, uh, and see if we can use wire cutter as a reference point then as well. I may need to go into a specific chair and try it against that chair, but let's see what comes back with here. It's checking sources, it's reaching out to the internet for me. Oh, and wow, yeah. So Amazon typical prices, an example one, entry ergonomic mesh chair, 285, 54, mid-range, wire cover top pits. So yeah, let, let's go into one here. This chair. So it was doing it general there, just comparing prices uh, across Amazon and uh, comparing them against wire cutter then as well. Let's see if we'll do the same thing for one particular chair then as well. So yeah, it's identified the chair, the price, and it's actually pulled out some of the features then as well. Oh, it's giving me a nice little gra uh, nice little table, and then it's comparing it against wire cutter as well. So yeah, so there's three similar models then as well. And wow, that's pretty cool. Just think what you can do with sort of any website from this. Um, instantly get the reference another one and, and bring it directly in. Instead of having to switch between tabs, your assistant is there and then and can search for you. On to the next one. Now, next we're gonna look at agentic automation. This is getting it to do actual things on your behalf and getting it to run tasks that you're telling it to do in the background. I'm gonna look up tech use Letters UK. Um, yeah, let me just pick this first one here. Perfect. Yep, so here we have a typical kind of newsletter, and I want to sign up for this newsletter. So I'm going to open up my assistant and I'm going to tell it to sign me up for this 
use letter. And what it should do is take my stored details uh, that Chrome will have stored on your behalf. Ah, yeah, you can see there's like a blue background that's gone around the, the screen then as well. So the agent is looking at the screen and there we go. It's filled in all my information for me. I know that's uh, quite a small and quite a pathetic example then as well, but yeah, it's actually clicked on the link for me and everything. <laughs> uh, so yeah, uh, instead of going away, I have to build some automation to do this. You're just using plain English and yeah, it's taken me a couple of seconds to get it to do that for me on my behalf. Think of, you know, the field of accessibility, um, how we can absolutely massively change that. There you go. There's a very small example of how my browser with AI can now do things for me on my behalf. On to the next one. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is workspaces. And workspaces can kind of be anything you want them to be. Um, I started one for a business I'm trying to get off the ground. So I'm pulling out lots of information. I have lots of spreadsheets. I have lots of tabs open. And I wanted to bring them all into one place. And that's exactly what workspace can do. So you can really make it out of anything. Even if you're planning your holiday, that can be a workspace. So you can tell it to, you know, uh, group your tabs together by whatever relevance they are. So group. Group my tabs by topic. Yeah. Let's see who gets on with this. I have a lot of tabs opened and a lot of them. Wow. You can see it's color coded them all. It's bunched them all together. And uh, let me see what it's done. So yeah, Lego UK economy. It'll actually tell me my groupings and all. Memes entertainment, UK economy, travel and accommodation, presentations, LinkedIn. Uh, miscellaneous Lego. Oh, it's put my email addresses together then as well. So in travel and accounts. Oh, that's cool. You can sort of expand them out then as well. So yeah, if you had 50 tabs, you could collapse them all down together and say a travel and accommodation. So EasyJet, Skyscanner, Hotels.com. I'll put them together then as well. That's cool. And those things will stay as well then. So yeah, you can see they're actually pinned in to the top down as well. So if you do come across a website or something you want to add to workspace, you just tell it or else you can drag the tab into the those groups then as well so it's aware of all the context of the website the, the theme and ethos of the website then as well it can add them then to these kind of things going forward that's cool so how much does it all cost well this is the thing it used to be locked behind a 200 dollars a month maps maximum subscription cost or 20 dollars a month minimum subscription cost depending on sort of which layer which model you wanted to go for then as well but because it's a browser and they wanted to compete with the likes of Chrome, the likes of Edge, Perplexity have actually made this completely free to anybody. Anybody can download it, anybody can run it. It runs on Mac and Windows at the minute and they have a iPhone and Android app as well, which is in pre-release at the minute then as well. So if you happen to be on the beta for that, please let me know how you get on. The I am using the Pro subscription and I actually managed to get a year's uh, free subscription to the Pro one and then as well, I will put a link in my in, in my, the description of this video down below if you want to use it then as well. But essentially, Perplexity Pro gives you essentially all the features that you get on the free version then as well, just a lot more of them. You're not going to run out of credits. You know, you can use the assistant as much as you like and you run things. I, I've been using this for a couple of weeks now. I haven't even got close to hitting any kind of limit on it then as well then. On to the conclusion. And so there you have it. That is Perplexity's Comet browser. It's not just a reskin of an old browser. It's fundamentally reimagining how we interact with the internet. Uh, it's the beginning of the agentic browsing era and browsers will become essentially your employee from now on. Are you ready to try it? Uh, there is a, a link down in the description of the video if you want to go and try it out. I've been using this for about two or three weeks now and this is all I've been using. So I've given up on Brave, I've given up on Firefox, I've given up on Chrome then as well. This is the only browser I use at the minute. I can't wait for the web app, that's the mobile app to launch as well, because I'll be straight on with that too, to get the same experience across them then as well. Let me know in the comments um, what you've been automating, the tasks you've been throwing at as well, and some of the really cool stuff you got it doing. As always, like and subscribe for more content. I'll see you on the next one. I'm Dan Murphy. Have a great day, everybody.